If Republicans want to gain control of the House of Representatives, a district like California's 47th is one they'll need to flip. Pollsters consider the race there a toss-up between the Democratic incumbent, Katie Porter, and Republican Scott Baugh, both of whom are running in a vastly redrawn district. This past weekend, we went to California to take a closer look at the race. Hugs, <laughs> photos, and pep talks. The signatures of a get-out-the-vote effort in Orange County, California. <laughs> at events in Costa Mesa and Huntington Beach, Republican and former state assembly member Scott Baugh worked to rally his supporters. We're going to retire Katie Porter and then we're going to Whoa. fire Nancy Pelosi. That's what we're going to do. Don't ring the doorbell. With a whiteboard in tow, Democratic Congresswoman Katie Porter talked with volunteers about how to connect with voters. People are nervous today to talk about politics. The division, the risk of political violence, the extremism, they're nervous. So if you're cheerful and you're calm, you're accepting, you listen, you show a willingness to listen to them, they're going to respond in kind and you're going to have a ton of fun today. I mean, you know, this economy's in the hole, man. But out canvassing with Scott Baugh, it quickly became clear what's top of mind for many voters. So that gentleman there said his top concern was inflation, the high cost of living. What's your answer to that? How do you how do you even address that if you're elected? Well, actually, interestingly enough, he addressed it himself. He he knew more about it than most people. He said that we have to get the supply going up. Inflation's caused by two things. Number one, a lack of uh, production of goods and services, and number two, too much spending. And if you bring your spending down, and you get your supply chains fixed, and you get the uh, uh, production coming back up, then you solve the inflation problem. At the pump here in Orange County, the average cost of a gallon of gas is $5.41, more than a dollar and a half above the national average. Porter acknowledges as the party in power, inflation is a problem that needs attention. I'm seeing it at the grocery store. I'm seeing it at the pump. We are all struggling with this. And so, but we have to remind people that Democrats have a plan and they have already been enacting that plan. Yes, we've taken action to try to bring down the cost of gas through things like releasing oil and the strategic um, petroleum reserve. We've taken action on bringing down health care premiums through the Inflation Reduction Act for people on the Affordable Care Act. But there is more to be done. And one of the things that I remind people is that Corporate profits today are make up about half of inflation. What we're paying at the grocery store, that extra $2, a dollar of that $2 is corporate profits. You know, one of the things I say often is, look, I would welcome Republicans to help with inflation, but all they have done is point the finger. They haven't offered any solutions. Boss says his answer is to cut spending. We can't afford to be running trillion dollar deficits every year. Uh, there's a, a financial consequence to that. Mm -hmm eventually and I think we're running up against the upper limit of that and so uh, we need to get our spending under control Congress right now they scratch every spending itch they have and we can't do that for Republican Joanne Adams who owns several small businesses in Orange County including Bogart's coffee shop tax cuts would be a welcome change I feel that when when taxes go up and when the supply chain issues have affected the prices for us and the availability of product for us, it ends up making it impossible to um, keep our prices where they are. I have to raise prices and I, I feel like that's um, harmful. If it, you know, it's harmful to me to have higher prices, but then my, my customers feel the same pain uh, when I raise prices. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. The district that Baugh and Porter are vying for is brand new. Its lines were redrawn in 2020. The affluent coastal district now includes a chunk of Orange County running along the coast and jutting inland to Irvine. Voting rights and University of California Irvine professor Tony Smith says when it comes to Orange County voters, there's more than meets the eye. Orange County used to be a Republican bastion, Ronald Reagan's GOP. Is that still the case? The Republicans that are here are still those people, mm -hmm. but the Republican Party nationally isn't that anymore. So the folks here are much more interested in hearing about capital gains taxes or the absence of capital gains taxes than they are hearing about same-sex marriage or abortion contestation or in general the culture wars. On those issues, Porter and Baugh are opposites. Porter supports access to abortion and has voted to protect same-sex marriage. Baugh is on the record as opposing abortion and is against same-sex marriage. 
if we see people like my opponent elected to Congress, he has said he will happily be the 218th vote for a nationwide abortion ban. And if that nationwide abortion ban goes into effect, there's nothing that California can do to protect that freedom. What do you tell the voters, people here, about why they should send you to D.C.? Well, because uh, America's on the wrong track. We have $31 trillion in debt. We have open borders. We have drugs and terrorists coming across the border. We need to change the direction of America. We need to spend less money. We need to get our fiscal house in order. We need to secure our border. And we need to make sure our, our police are funded. This race may also be swayed by money. Across the district, Katie Porter signs were at nearly every bus stop we passed, a sign of how much her campaign has raised, $22 million. Turns out the real Scott Baugh is a professional lobbyist and a serial lawbreaker. Of that, she spent more than $13 million on TV and digital ads. Spend more and impose... In contrast, Scott Baugh spent just over $1 million on ads. I'm running to change that. But he's accepted $8 million worth of airtime from the Congressional Leadership Fund, a super PAC. Maybe you should forget the whiteboard. Instead of forgetting about us. But ultimately, says Tony Smith, it may all come down to who exactly shows up to cast their ballot. Scott Baugh has said he thinks it's going to be a low turnout election. Well, he should hope it is because he's got a better shot at winning if it isn't. But there's no indication it's going to be a low turnout election. If anything, we see um, 18 to 30 year olds turning out at almost 40 percent if you can extrapolate from early voting. And that's going to be a historic high for that age group. And they're voting on abortion. Mm -hmm. the, you know, that's what they're voting on. They're not voting on capital gains tax. They don't, they don't know what it is. And in a district famous for its ocean waves more than its political ones, what remains unknown is who stays afloat and who wipes out.